Welcome all to the fourth um, ECPS Youth Seminars. Today we are welcoming Dr. Antonio Momak from the University of Bucharest to speak about digital populism and liberal democracy, European values versus populism in the digital era with Romania as a case study. Dr. Momak is the Dean of the Faculty of Journalism and Communication Sciences at the University of Bucharest working as an associate professor at the Department of Communication Sciences and Cultural Anthropology. He teaches courses on various aspects of communication and media education for undergraduate and postgraduate specializations of public relations, advertising and political marketing. He's the author of various articles on political sciences and communication published in the Romanian Journal of Communications and Public Relations Journal of Media Research and the Romanian Sociology. Our seminar will begin with a presentation by Dr. Momak for, for around 45 minutes, and then we will proceed to a Q&A session. If you have any questions before the seminar, feel free to type them in the chat, but we do prefer that you ask them yourself at the end of the session to create a more open and interactive discussion. Um, we are very happy to have you here with us today, um, Antonio, and the floor is yours. Um, thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much, Mirai. Thank you all for having me here. Um, my uh, speech tonight, um, it will be about um, populism um, and um, uh, the threats that uh, digital populism uh, uh, show to European values uh, in uh, this digital era. And um, I'm going to talk with you at the end uh, of my presentation about the situation in uh, Romania when it comes to populism. That's the reason why I'm uh, going to show you tonight uh, three parts of uh, uh, my agenda. I'm going to discuss with you, uh, first of all, uh, if there are any differences between um, the way usually people, not only common people, but also in academics or journalists or elites understand by democracy. And uh, I believe that uh, one uh, major cause of the problem of the fact that uh, democracy is not working or is not working properly is the fact that the, the people usually understand very different things by democracy and especially um, it, the confusion uh, is due to the fact that they define democracy in the etymological way. They define democracy in the etymological way, and this would cause a lot of uh, confusions and most, uh, or more than this, uh, the populist would use this confusion, this uh, etymological uh, definition and uh, this conceptual um, confusion in their own favor. I will talk with you uh, tonight also, uh, as I mentioned, uh, about uh, uh, the accession uh, of the digital populism in Romania. And uh, of course, I will present you um, a, a case study related with um, a very young um, party. Uh, its name is Alliance for the Union of Romanians, uh, in short, AUR. Our in Romanian means gold, and they usually uh, work uh, online. They 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 don't have any grassroots uh, movement or uh, organization, but they started online as an online movement, and they um, uh, um, uh, practically um, uh, had a lot of um, uh, sympathizers and uh, a lot of uh, people uh, gathering around them uh only using uh in fact uh, uh new technologies uh, social media or digital uh platforms and i'm i'm going to talk with you uh about uh, about uh, uh their ascension and to the fact that that now they became uh, one of the most important party in uh, Romania with a uh, almost extremist and i can say uh, almost fascist uh discourse so, first of all, let me uh, start with um, uh, the confusion, with uh, this problem. Uh, the fact that usually people are uh, uh, discussing and understanding democracy through its uh, etymological um, uh, definition. I think that's one of the major problems with uh, democracy. What is, in fact, etymological democracy? 
Uh, democracy, um, when you define it uh, in an etymological way, it means demos and kratos. These are old Greek um, nouns. Uh, demos means people and kratos in uh, old Greek, old ancient Greek uh, means power. So usually the people, not only in Romania, but anywhere else, when you ask them, what is it democracy or uh, what do you understand by democracy? Uh, what is for you democracy? They would say democracy is the power of the people. The, maybe it should be the power of the people in a way, uh, because uh, of course what, what uh, the politicians or the institutions are doing, they have to deserve the people after all. But in reality, uh, the people doesn't have so much power if you let alone the moment of elections. The people have power usually in democracy when they elect their own representatives, or on the other way, when they, they participate in uh, petitions, when they protest, when they uh, go outside in the streets for riots. That is the real moment uh, when, when, when the, the people uh, have uh, the power. But otherwise, they exert their own power through institutions and through their own representatives that they are um, uh, elect. So the modern democracy is in a way some kind of indirect democracy, not a direct democracy, but a mediated democracy. So there is this um, uh, political scientist, uh, Giovanni Sartori, who observed since 1987 the fact that uh, etymological democracy, in fact, offer us a dangerous definition of democracy for democracy itself. Because the people easily can see wherever in any uh, liberal democratic society the fact that in reality uh, the, the power doesn't belong to the people usually. So it would be very easy for uh, the ones that, doesn't, that, that don't like democracy uh, to say the fact that you see uh, democracy doesn't work, democracy um, it is not in the interest for the people, even, even though uh, democracy uh, it uh, promises the fact that, uh, you know, uh, should provide um, uh, the power to the people. Uh, so that's, that's the reason why to understand the fact that, uh, and this is the way we should understand um, what uh, Giovanni Sartori meant when he said etymological definition of democracy is a dangerous definition. Because in reality, modern democracy is not only a mediated uh, system, uh, in which you can, as an ordinary people, to exert your power through your own representatives. But on the other hand, modern democracy stands also for many other things. And most of uh, them are related with constitu constitutional democracy and constitutional uh, guarantees and representative institutions like political parties and the national parliament or in European Union, also European uh, parliament. So uh, modern democracy represents in reality today the mechanism by which a majority is exerting power, of course, using elections. And uh, this power is usually, if we are talking about democracy, uh, it has to be uh, used in the general interest. And of course, you have uh, here uh, Leibhardt and many others which are talking about inclusive democracy, which means that you have to, to, to bring together all uh, the people, uh, especially uh, minorities, and to ask them and to respect them uh, when you uh, make decision in uh, interest of, of the um, majority. Because the, the democracy, the modern democracy, doesn't mean only the power of the majority of the people in a society, but means uh, to, uh, in, in the same time, to respect uh, the interests of the minorities. So it is inclusive in the sense that everybody should be represent, represented. Everybody should have a voice. Everybody should be represented in the, in the parliament or when you take a decision, you should include everybody. So what, what um, the political scientists I mentioned would say, they, 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 would, they would say that democracy should not be 
uh, in a sentence should not be the tyranny of the majority of the people should not be uh, you know uh, a, a dictatorship of a majority of the people of course that that's a system that's a mechanism you have to take decision uh, through majorities but on the other hand you have to respect the minorities and not only mathematical minorities but also political ideological and so on and so forth so um, the modern democracy in fact is not only the power of the people is not only the power of the majority of the people, of the citizens, in fact, but a democracy today, a modern democracy is also liberal. So democracy, the modern democracy are very related with the way that political power is, is, is uh, exerted. And uh, usually you do this uh, through the government. And usually uh, democracy is liberal when in fact limits the govern governmental authority and in fact protects the individual rights, plural values and rival freedoms. So is, there is uh, this political scientist, um, uh, Papas, uh, he's a, a, a Greek uh, scientist, but uh, he's teaching at the University of Florence in Italy. And uh, he says that uh, liberal democracy means, uh, after all, so the modern uh, uh, representative democracy uh, in the European Union means, after all, fundamental human rights and rule of law. That means that you have to respect every and each citizen, no matter if he belongs to the majority of the or to the minority. So the rule of law in everyday life as part of an open society the equal protection of human rights, civil rights and civil liberties. This is what uh, liberal democracy means. So liberal democracy is when, when if, you, if you invoke uh, Farid Zakaria, the one that introduced the term illiberalism, the illiberal uh, democracy, uh, Farid Zakaria would say that liberal democracy is a political system marked not only by free elections, but also by the rule of law, which means the protection of basic liberties through separation of powers, uh, through this equilibrium uh, between powers. And these uh, basic liberties are speech, assembly, religion, or the property. So um, in, uh, in um, uh, Takis Papa's view, in fact, there is a, there is a connection between liberal democracy and populism and this connection is due to the confusion the confusion i mentioned at the early beginning the fact that that people when they are thinking about democracy they understand usually the power of the people so um that's the reason why uh, the populists are so popular because the populists are gonna talk about uh the power of the people they would invoke the power of the people. They would pretend, they would claim they, in fact, represent the people. They are the voice of the people. So what we see when we are looking to the populist discourse or to the populist leaders or populist party is the fact they might seem democratic because etymologically, the people should have the power in democracies. And they would say that we are talking in the name of the people. That's uh, our name. We are the voice of the people. But on the other hand, on the other hand, you you would see when they come into power or when they launch their discourses or uh, convey their messages, they are very illiberal. So what uh, Takis Papas observe is the fact that illiberalism, which may seem democratic, is in fact populism. So uh, when it comes to, to, to populism, uh, there, is, there are some questions, there are some problems. Uh, because we can ask, uh, and that's a uh, legitimate question, who decides who is part of the people and who is not? Who is the one to decide that? The populist would know for sure the answer. So uh, the people usually in the populist mind is uh, something which is very pure, uh, which is uh, not contaminated. Uh, which is not corrupted. And the elite, the political elite, and not only political elite, but also media, uh, also institutions, um, uh, financial institutions or political institutions are usually corrupted in the populist uh, view, in the populist discourse. 
So the people in their mind is some kind of homogeneous uh, construction, but in reality, uh, there is not such a people. Nowhere in the world, the people is not a, as homogeneous as the populist claim. So populists consolidate when you are when you are looking into uh, their own mechanism or uh, the way they are uh, exerting power when uh, they are uh, elected. You would see that usually populists consolidate power, depriving key liberal institution of autonomy. And which are? What are these liberal institutions? These are judiciary power, public authorities they want to control, and they have something against the traditional media. This is another characteristic that you will see with the populists. Usually, the populists will say about the traditional media, they are fake news. You'll see that with Donald Trump, you'll see that with many others, you'll see that in Romania, you'll see that in Hungary, in many other countries. And they would uh, they 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 would they would put this label on the traditional media uh, because traditional media and especially that part of traditional media which uh, it is uh, critical with them uh, they will say this type of of media is in fact uh, which is not favorable to the populist it is uh, for them uh, fake news so uh, who are these uh, characters who are these these uh, populists and another question is is it populism and and this is a question uh, still um, in uh, the in the political science uh, it is a debate among the political scientists is it populism a demagogy or is it an ideology at this point so what are the characteristics of populism populism is the idea that the sovereignty uh, of a nation uh, belongs and should belong and should be exercised only by the people without regard to institutions. So this is one of the most important characteristics. They would say the, the power should belong to the people and we don't need, uh, you know, uh, mediated uh, institutions uh, like uh, you see uh, the national or European parliament. We don't need political parties because they are corrupted and uh, they do not represent the interests uh, of the people. So uh, the, the power should belong to the people and they should be the one to, to exercise the power. So populists, when they, they talk about that, they seem very democratic because the people have in their mind the etymological definition of the democracy. So if the democracy means the power of the people and the populist leader would say, you see, the, 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 the power should be exercised and should belong to the people, you'd say, you'd, you'd say, of course, we are talking about a democratic leader. But in fact, what Papas observes is the fact that even it seems democratic, and of course, sometimes populists are elected, even it seems democratic, it is never liberal because the populists reject the human freedoms and the fundamental individual rights. And that's the reason why uh, some, uh, uh, you know, um, pundits uh, like uh, Nadia Urbinati uh, observed that, in fact, this is a dangerous, a real dangerous threat to constitutional democracy. In fact, populism is a dangerous threat to constitutional uh, democracy. And Nadia Urbinati, in fact, describes populism or like a series of anti. In fact, populism is anti-elites, anti-political party, anti-political institution, especially mainstream parties and uh, the national parliament or European parliament, anti-civic organization, anti-NGOs, anti-individual rights and freedoms, anti-political leadership, anti-establishment, and of course, why not? anti-system. Uh, so it, is it populism a style? Is it populism a way to win elections using uh, the demagogy? Or is it an ideology? And uh, the way they, 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 they act is in the fact that they are never liberal. That's for sure. They may seem democratic, but they are never liberal. So um, uh, the populist is illiberal because they are against the liberal democracy, as I described it uh, earlier. It rejects the human freedoms and civil rights. 
usually you see in the populist discourse the fact, for example, here in the Central and Eastern Europe, the fact that the West is corrupted, but in which way? In a moral way. The populists in the West would say about uh, the countries, the new uh, joiners, the fact they are corrupted in an economical way. Uh, the populists in the West would say about uh, the Western countries, uh, the fact they are corrupted in a moral way uh, because uh, uh, they are against traditional values, uh, Christian values uh, like uh, religion, like church, like traditional uh, family and so on and so forth. So you usually see, you'd see uh, this type of uh, discourse, uh, this type of style, this type of strategy here in Central and Eastern Europe, where, where usually populists will say, you know, the West is morally corrupted because there you have a lot of atheist people, you have a LGBT and Q movement. And for them, these are not individual and freedom rights. These are, in fact, uh, the proofs that uh, you see European Union is morally uh, corrupted and it is against uh, our traditional uh, values. And uh, it uh, threatens, in fact, our traditional values and our, our cultural identity. So the, there is this debate, as I mentioned earlier, uh, among scholars, if, is it uh, a ideology or is it only a style? Is it only demagogy and political strategy to gain more votes and to get elected? Or it is it more than this is, in fact, ideology? And uh, Karl, Mudes, Karl Mudes' definition was the fact that uh, he, he, he stated that uh, populism is, in a way, a rarefied ideology, considering that society can be divided into two antagonist groups, the virtuous people, as I mentioned before, the people is usually virtuous, is, is, is pure, and the corrupt elite, arguing the fact that politics should express the people's general will, as I mentioned uh, before. What Takis Papas uh, underlined, and I, I have to recognize the fact that I embrace uh, his theory, is the fact that we are talking here about an ideology. In fact, populism is illiberalism, and it is a ideology that has uh, certain enemies. And these enemies of the people, which stop us uh, to uh, have the dire democracy, the democracy where the people should and, 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 and have to uh, express and exert the power, these are the enemies of the people. The migrants are the, 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 the enemies of the people. The minorities are the, 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 the enemies of the people. The traditional media, the three M's, are the, the, the problems uh, for which we cannot uh, see uh, the uh, etymological uh, democracy um, uh, you know, expressed and, and uh, in the reality. So they would have some problems. Usually, the populists would, would, would have they, they they would find some uh, some uh, entities to blame. The, the the situation, the political situation, the economical crisis, uh, generally any type of crisis that we we encounter, it is due to these enemies of the people, who may be the refugees uh, during the refugee crisis, and they, these are the Muslims. European Union itself. Uh, for usually for uh, uh, for for the for the populists here in the in the Central Eastern European countries, European Union and its institutions, it's a problem because they are trying to uh, transform us in colonies. Uh, uh, they try to steal, uh, you know, our resources. Otherwise, the state institutions, political parties, and these are especially the parliament. These are the intermediary. Uh, between the people and ed elites, uh, these uh, should not exist anymore because they are a problem. They, uh, in fact, disappointed uh, the, 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 the population, the, the, the people. So we have to get rid of this. We get to get rid of, of political traditional parties, of the old uh, parliament. And usually you will see, uh, you, you will hear the populists, especially calling for referendums against, uh, you know, the parliament against the uh, traditional political parties. Uh, 
uh, we have to 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 uh, give up in the uh, some um, you know uh, members of the of the parliament because they are too many. Uh, if you have two chambers, you have to delete one and have one chamber because they consume a lot of resources and money. So we don't need this type of discussions and negotiations inside uh, the parliaments because this is waste of time and money. We should let the people to express directly their own uh, power. So also some of them would say uh, that the, the problem is the problem is the, the globalization who threaten in fact the national sovereignty and especially the traditional the traditional uh, values. But we are living in a, in an era where uh, um, uh, digital populism and uh, um, uh, hate speech and uh, um, ways to instigate against each other and against human rights and against uh, fundamental or civil, civil rights, it is very easy online. Because today we have, in fact, uh, a medium. We, you have uh, here, uh, you know, the digital environment. You have the online environment where you can say whatever you want. You uh, it can exert the power. And uh, this is, in a way, uh, the promise of the internet and the promise of the digital democracy. Uh, because the populists would say, you know, if, you ha if we have the internet, if we have uh, uh, the, the, the digital medium, why do we need still the political parties? Why do we still need the parliament? Because, we, because today, the dire democracy, like in the ancient Greek, it is very possible. It is possible because we have the online environment. Everybody can can vote and, and everybody can express in this new agora. Uh, everybody can use uh, his or her smartphone and digital platforms and new media. So we don't need uh, the political parties anymore. We don't need the, the, the parliament anymore. Uh, the voice of the people can be heard through internet. So this is what I call uh, digital populism. Uh, digital democracy, uh, it seems possible uh, because uh, we have uh, uh, internet uh, era 2.0. Uh, let's talk about Beppe Grillo and Movimento Cinque Stelle, Five Stars Movement. They started on a blog. They started a, uh, as a organization which proclaimed uh, itself uh, not being politics. They uh, said from the early beginning that they are against politics, not only against all politics, but they are against politics, they are against political parties, they are not doing politics, even though they were uh, participating in two uh, elections. And they were claiming, you see, we can use uh, um, holograms, we can use uh, artificial intelligence, we can use blogs or social media, in order to exert the direct democracy. The, the political uh, power uh, belongs to the people and now they have uh, new media. Uh, why uh, should we use uh, politicians anymore? Why should we use uh, political parties or, uh, or, or the parliament itself? So we don't need the institutions of mediation anymore. We don't need the representatives anymore once we have the internet. If we have social media, we, if, we, if we have internet, uh, now it is easy or easier uh, to us to exert uh, the political uh, power. So uh, th this is this is uh, of course demagogy, and this is of course not 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 true uh, because uh, the people don't have time. First of all, to answer, to debate, and to discuss all the issues that could appear. Of course, we need to have more direct democracy. Of course, we need to uh, to use uh, internet if we want to uh, change things and to involve people into politics. We can do that, but what we cannot do is to uh, to uh, block or delete or forbid political parties, because political parties they are professionals of politics. They 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 are paid for that. They take their their resources and their their time in order you know to to read all the laws 
uh, to make the laws, to debate upon them, and, and so on and so forth. The usually ordinary people don't, don't have this, uh, this time. They, they are not uh, eager to do that. They have their own families, they have they, they, their own uh, businesses, they have their own private lives. So it is impossible to say that we should uh, uh, give up on, on political parties or, or, um, or mediated representative institutions like, like the parliament, because that's just impossible. But for the populist, it's the, it is the best way to, to say that the fact you see the establishment, um, Mr. Momok from University of Bucharest, uh, many others would represent, in fact, only the interest of, of the elites, of the academics, only of the interests of the, uh, you know, of the establishment. They are not talking in the name of the people. They are against uh, the people. No, we are just, uh, you see, uh, we, we, we say more than this. We say it is not enough. You also need, you don't only need a way or mean to express yourself and to vote. This is not uh, democracy or uh, this is only a part of democracy. You also have to have, you know, civic education. You also have to have respect for the fundamental rights. You also have to have, you know, uh, people which are very different than you that should be represent, represented in, 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 in the way that the, the, the decisions are, are made. So it is much more than just assure the people an agora where they should express themselves. So uh, coming back to Takis Papas and uh, his book, uh, Populism and Liberal Democracy, uh, he uh, observed that when we are discussing uh, populism, we, we, we have in fact this minimal definition of populism. And we can see um, these two constant properties of, of populism. The first one of all is uh, democraticness, the fact that, that democracy uh, is there in their definition, in the fact that, that, that they use the etymological definition and they use, in fact, uh, democracy as a weapon of uh, discourse uh, to, 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 to construct legitimacy for their own uh, uh, you know, initiatives and to attack the others, to attack the opponents, the moderates, or the establishment by saying, you see, they are not uh, democratic as we are. So, so they are uh, in a way democratic because they speak in the name of the people and that, that's true. And some of them may be elected. But on the other hand, their speech, their message, their ideology, the way they exert power is against liberal values, is illiberalism. So populism is also illiberalism. Uh, and also you may have some variable properties uh, when we, we are discussing um, uh, populism, uh, this use of polarization. Usually they, they would use this in their discourse, us versus them. Us are the people, them are the political elites. These are the enemies, our new enemies. I, I told you before, which are the new enemies of, of the people, uh, especially the traditional uh, political parties, uh, usually sometimes minorities, and of course, traditional media. These are the new enemies of the of the new populists, and of course they usually would appeal to the people. This is their discourse. Um, they, they 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 would say that they represent the voice of the people. They are speaking, of course, in the name of the people. They are they are the people, and sometimes they may have also a charismatic leadership. Why not? So the minimal definition definition of populism in uh, Takis Papa's uh, uh, definition. Uh, I think I think that, that that's very clear uh, for for uh, all of us. Uh, the fact that the liberal democracy means to defend the people's general will, protecting the individual rights, the interest of minorities, and the rule of law. Because liberal democracy means not only the general people's will, but also means constitution also means rules, also means rule of law, which protect fundamental rights, the rights of minorities, not only the interest of the majorities. On the other hand, you will have populism. Of course, populism as a, as a regime, populism as, as, a, as a discourse, populism as, as, democ as, as, as a, as a uh, ideology, which is in fact a illiberal democraticness because they 
would speak in the name of the people. Maybe they they even try to defend the people, but we don't know who the people is. The people is maybe only the, their own electorate, only the people that, that voted for them. But all the others, which may be minorities, which may be the progressists, which may be, uh, I don't know, uh, uh, some kind of movements which are uh, not mainstream, this is not the people because this, this affect the heter affects the, the heterogeneous people. But let's say they are defending the general people's will. Okay, they, they defend uh, the, 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 the general will, but they are doing this against individual rights, against minorities, and they don't care about the rule of law. So, um, of course, uh, when, when, when I have that in mind, and uh, Takis Papas usually is giving uh different examples he uses uh, donald trump he uses uh, uh of course many other examples uh, from uh, from hungary uh, uh from italy and so on and, and 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 so forth but let me talk with you for the for the uh second and third part which are very related very connected with you about the populism in, here in romania which is the case study i want to to introduce and i have uh I think uh, another five, seven minutes for that. So um, what happened in the in the last years, of course, we, we know we, we, we trespassed uh, a pandemic and uh, uh, usually uh, online uh, people, of course, worked, uh, people studied, uh, get information, uh, had fun, uh, uh, meet each other, but also they were light. Also, uh, the digital environment was used as uh, a tool for misinformation, for rumors, for unverified facts. Uh, and there are some there are some studies like the one of uh, Vosogi uh, and uh, his colleagues that uh, shows us that this information spreads online ten times faster than official posts and press releases of the institution. And that's that that makes very difficult for for a government to make people you know understand why they should wear a mask or they why they should uh, get a vaccine uh, because uh, the official post or press releases will reach 10, 100 times less people than the disinformation or the fake news so what else happened in romania of course not only here but in the central and eastern part of europe of europe during the pandemics and, and before that, we have these discourses proclaimed uh, by the uh, and used uh, by the by the nationalists. Uh, the fact that we need to protect our traditional values, uh, national sovereignty. Usually, these uh, values are related with uh, our cultural uh, tradition and identity, like uh, orthodoxy or uh, uh, traditional family. And usually uh, uh, these politicians here would say that, you see, uh, the West is uh, morally corrupted because they are, uh, you know, pro-LGBT or they are atheist and uh, more of this uh, from an uh, economic perspective, uh, the West transformed Romania into a colony. So I mentioned this, 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 uh, this party, uh, which is in fact uh, the way that um, the Romanian fascism was reinvented. Uh, they, they, they have a lot of things in common with the interwar Iron Guard, the legendary movement or fascist movement in Romania. Uh, that was the third political party in Romania in the interwar period. After the liberals and, and the peasant party in the interwar period, Iron, Iron Guard, uh, the fascist movement here was the third political party. And in fact, after the movement in Germany, uh, the, fascist, the Nazi movement in Germany and fascist movement in Italy, the fascism uh, in Romania was the third in terms of, of people that uh, elected, uh, you know, the fascists. So uh, of course they they have a they have a background. So, but what, what I'm trying to say is the fact that uh, they didn't exist until until 2020. This this political power didn't exist until 20, 2020. So in, in in 2020, early 2020, they 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 founded themselves. Uh, they had no grassroots local organization. But still, in 2020 elections, they managed to win 10% of the parliamentary uh, Romanian elections. And they, what they've done was to use a lot of social media platforms to spread, in fact, uh, uh, lies and rumors 
related to vaccines, related to uh, wearing mask or mask up movement, and to mobilize their supporters to vote against the traditional traditional political parties and against uh, uh, the one they said they are doing politics. And they they entered Romanian parliament in 2020 and 2020 and 21, but they used a lot of violence inside Romanian parliament, physical aggression. Uh, this here you may see uh, the lady uh, Diana Shoshaka belongs to belonged used to belong to to uh, uh, Aur because uh, he uh, he resigned uh, from the, the party uh, after a scandal uh, when when she uh, sequestrated an Italian journalist in her own uh, uh, um, apartment when where she was giving an interview and she didn't let her out the Italian journalist. Uh, you see here also uh, Giorgio Simeon, who is uh, embracing and forcing uh, the Minister of Energy to 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 go down from the from the podium uh, because uh, he he didn't like uh, the the measures that the Minister of Energy, the Liberal Minister of Energy, proposed to Romanians. More than this, they were inspired by Trump movement, which happened in January 2021, and they prepared that at, at the end of uh, 2021, in December 2021, they attacked the Romanian parliament building. They forced the building, they entered there, and they said, you know, no more parliament, no more political parties, because these are the traitors. Uh, we don't need political parties. Uh, the, the, the power should belong only to the people. More than this, in the in the in the last period, uh, you you will see a lot of a lot of um, icons, a lot of symbols uh, belonging to the fascist legendary movement, um, and especially to Cornelis Zela Codreanu, who used to be the founder and the leader of the uh, legendary movement, and um, the new leader of the fascist movement in Romania, uh, George uh, Simeon, uh, had a wedding. Uh, where uh, a lot of people participated in the uh, open field, uh, and he used also uh, the, the same signs and the cost popular costume like uh, Cornelius Alacodreanu uh, did uh, in the interior period. So let me conclude. Uh, our, the Romanians uh, for Unity uh, Alliance, organized street protests in 2020, 2021, against wearing the mask. And especially they, in order to do that, they organized themselves and mobilized their supporter, supporters uh, using Facebook. Uh, they use social media platforms like TikTok, Facebook, YouTube, in order to persuade their, their, their supporters to oppose the vaccination process. They claim they are the voice of the people and even made a list of traditional journalists and traditional publications that should be shut down because they are fake news. That sounds very familiar. And even they denied the Holocaust in Romania and they didn't want the, that part of Romanian history to be studied in schools. They opposed to that. So the last three um, slides are about their um, percentage they obtain in the in the elections and uh, the polls uh, these days so in december 2020 uh, our gain 10 percent out of nowhere it was no with a party with no organization uh with with which which uh, mobilize uh its supporters only using social media and they still with 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 uh, uh this kind of message against political parties and against the European Union and against the, uh, 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 the vaccine process, they earn 10% in the two chambers of Romanian uh, parliament. And if you are looking to the polls in, in January 2022, this year, they are the second part. After the Social Democratic Party, they, they used to be, when they entered uh, the fourth party, you see there, uh, they had around 10%. Uh, after Social Democratic Party, after the Liberal Party, after the Saving Romanian uh, uh, Party, Union uh, Party, uh, which is uh, uh, a party with, with a pro-European uh, message, uh, then you have um, uh, Aur, which had 10% in elections, but at the beginning of the year, using also social media to express themselves, uh, uh, using, you know, uh, violence, uh, 
uh, in the street and the Romanian parliament, uh, the people the people supported them and they uh, say uh, that their intentions, uh, at least 20% of them, is to support this uh, alliance for the unity of Romanians. Our, uh, in the Romanian parliament, after the social democratic parties, which used to be around 30%, now we have uh, our with 20%, the Liberals with 16 and the Saving Romania Party uh, with 12% and uh, uh, the others. You see there the, the features. So um, what happened? We had a crisis. Uh, we, 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 we had a pandemic. We, we have now a war in, uh, in, uh, in Ukraine. Uh, and on the other hand, we have a uh, uh, hybrid uh and uh, online war of disinformation and a lot of people do support using populism uh digital populism weapons do support and embrace uh their uh, messages which are messages unfortunately against european union and against european values that would be my uh references and uh, thank you for your kind attention Thank you so much for this very excellent presentation. Um, I will start accepting questions, but please do raise your hand so I can see you. Um, and I want to begin with two simple questions that just naturally come to mind. So my first question is, what does um, digital populism mean for European democracy in general? And my second question is, um, how useful or central are conspiracy conspiracy theories for the success of digital populism. Thank you. Yeah, so um, digital populism, digital populism is in fact uh, populism. Uh, but uh, of course, it is another, they have another argument now uh, that the power should belong to the people and unfortunately it is not. and. This weapon, it is new media, the smartphone, the digital environment, the convergence uh, media. The fact that you can, you, you don't have any excuse to let the people exert the power themselves because we have the internet, the internet of things. Uh, now uh, you have the digital platforms. Now you have uh, all the uh, uh, electronic medium uh, which are available for ordinary people. So you should let the people use those in order to express and exert the power. So this is around Europe. Uh, this is populist, but they add to this traditional populist, they add the digital environment and they use the digital environment not only to gain votes and to express themselves and organize riots or organize protests or, or mobilize people to polls or to votes, but also they invoke they, they can now invoke new media. They can now uh, use internet as, you know, uh, a proof that you see the internet is there and you still use political parties. You still use parliament. Uh, we don't need those because they are corrupted. The mediated, the mediated institutions, the, 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 the mediated way to express uh, the, the general uh, people's will is corrupted. So this is all, all over Europe because now they, they can use that and they are doing this not only for, as I mentioned, uh, gaining more votes, but also uh, to show you that you see uh, the direct democracy, it is available, but you, you don't use it. Uh, so we, we have to get rid of the, of the representatives. And the other questions, uh, sorry, the other, the second question, can you repeat that? Um, I was just asking how central or important is conspiracy theories for the yeah. success of populism on, you know, the digital platforms. Yeah. So uh, the conspiracy theory, uh, the conspiracy theories may be sometimes used uh, by the populists, but you see, they usually don't, you know, work like that. They usually uh, use parts of the truth. They 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 uh, mystify the truth. They reinterpret, uh, you know, the data. Uh, they are they are using uh, 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 the conspiracy the conspiracy theories 
only if they are very you know rooted in the traditional culture if 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 in the background in the cultural background of a, of a population you have these ideas for example that that the the the, the gypsies are uh, the thieves and the Jews, uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, want to introduce a new uh, uh, world order, and you have this uh, in in people's mind. They would use such uh, theories. Of course, on the other hand, based on that, they would say, you see, the vaccine was invented in the some kind of laboratory, so they want to exterminate us, and so on and so forth. They would use uh, uh, th uh, conspiracy theories, but these are only some weapons are not central there. Uh, for the populists, the, the central message is the fact that the, the new, the, the, the political system uh, itself, the democracy itself, the liberal democracy itself, it is corrupted. Uh, so we have to get uh, rid of uh, democracy uh, as it is today because it doesn't represent the interest of the people. And for that uh, reason, they could use from time to time conspiracy theories, lies, rumors sometimes the truth may, may be used uh, but they can, they don't explain they they would use uh, simple answers in order to construct their uh, own uh, ideology in order to justify the fact that you see uh, the problem today uh, uh, are the refugees the trouble to, the problem today are the lgbtq movement the problem today with the society uh, it is uh, the traditional media because they are corrupted they are they are fake news all the uh, all the all the mediated representative institutions are uh, a threat for the populists because in the name of the direct democracy and using the way the people are understanding democracy as only as the power of the people letting aside you see fundamental rights civil rights rule of law uh, independence of justice independence of the media and so on and so forth they don't care about all of that they only claim they care only about the uh, you know the 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 pure uh, people because they represent the people they are the voice of the people uh, so they can express uh, you see the tired democracy um thank you so much i think we have a question from ecps um cuz they just raised mm, their hand yeah i see a hand there yeah thank hello you. um First of all, thank you very much for this very engaging presentation, uh, Dr. Momo. Just uh, you mentioned how the notion of value has different meanings in Eastern and Western Europe. And uh, we all know that EU has a claim for European values, which are expected to be embraced by European societies, but it seems that this is not the case. And uh, with this in mind, I'd like to hear your views on the future of Europe, future of the EU, especially in the face of rising populism. Uh, I'm asking this question uh, in the context of Eastern Europe. Thank you. Yeah, thank you for the question. It's, it's not an easy one. Um, of course, I think it is connected very I, I will give you the short answer. It is not the right answer, but it is the short answer. Um, the short answer is related with civic education and with people's expectations. You see, after 89, in Romania, and not only in Romania, when you are discussing about democracy or Western values or Western democracy, the people here were thinking only about the material things like not freedom of expression or uh, you know plural uh, values or political parties they were thinking only about capitalism they were thinking when we when they were if you are, were asking the people what democracy means for you in the 90s in romania after it and they would say you have the right to do anything you want that means anarchy not democracy you have the right to do anything you want now you are free and more than this, you have the right, and you should be, you should, you should, you should uh, you see um, leave like in the Western countries. This is the reason why uh, in Europe, in Eastern Europe, especially Romania, there was a lot of optimism related with uh, European Union uh, and joining European Union because the expectations were very high. The people were understanding by European Union or by European values, uh, you know, a different way of life, uh, of living, uh, the the material. Uh, life should be uh, other uh, uh, 
than, than it used to be before 89. So the people were very disappointed with democracy very, very soon because democracy, because they, they, they blame democracy for not having capitalism, because they blame democracy for not having uh, that uh, happy, uh, wealthy life they were expecting uh, in 89 when, when they've done their revolution in the streets and they, they, they died for that. Uh, few of us, few of our parents were thinking about democracy as a, uh, you know, a promise for liberty, uh, liberty of or freedom of speech or things like that, the, uh, which are in fact the basic core of democracy. Not only, of course, you mentioned, uh, and you're thinking maybe about solidarity. Uh, you, you're thinking about society. Uh, you're thinking about all the core values of the European Union, and you are you are right. But you know, um, the the most common people are not having this in mind when they are when we are talking about democracy. Uh, they they expect another way of life they display not only freedom of expression they also it, it, it expect uh, you see uh, another type of life and they 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 expect also uh, you know uh, some kind of respect for their own traditions for their own uh, you know values or, or or their own identities so that's that's that is so easy that that is the reason why it's so easy for the populist or for the nationalist or extremist to say you see, European Union don't give you uh, respect for your traditional liberties because they care only about the LGBT, LGBT movement. They, they don't care about uh, your religion. They, they carry only only about uh, you know their they, they being uh, wealthy and they don't care about the fact that in Romania, forty percent of population you know is still very poor and uh, uh, they are living in the country uh, side area. So it's very easy for the populists to say, you see, the, the democracy of the European Union uh, doesn't work. So we should look after another political model. Uh, so that's why some, uh, of course, uh, would look into the East, uh, you know, to find the truth or to find the way. Uh, of course, in Romania, at least, we, we don't have still this. I mean, of course, you have people which uh, maybe uh, would support uh, Putin, but these are, these are, very, these are very few. Uh, but on the other hand, you have more and more people which are disappointed with the European Union. So how I see the future of, uh, of, of uh, European Union is to use, to use more and more schools, uh, pedagogy, uh, critical thinking, and civic education to, to have what you have here. Uh, to have discussions with, with, with ordinary people and their, their sons and their, their, their uh, daughters and with, with their kids uh, to explain them what the European Union values are and to compare them with, with any other uh, political system. Because let's face it, uh, there is not such a, uh, you know, uh, ideal model. There are better or worse models. And at least for us, and that, that's the case of Romania, European Union worked. I mean, if you ask the people, the majority of the population, how it used to be in the 90s or before 89, they would say to you, even though they don't like so much European Union, their institutions, they would say, yeah, that's true. Being inside the European Union is better for us than being outside the European Union. And uh, when it comes to values, there are a lot of values that, that, that the people would share because I was talking about our or talking about populism, but you see, the populists tried before the pandemic to redirect, uh, you know, the Romanian uh, government or uh, politics to to another to, another, to, to, to different, uh, you know, targets. And for example, we had a referendum when, when, where they had they, they wanted to uh, forbid the marriage uh, between uh, the gay couples, the couples. And the Romanian population said no to that. They didn't approve that. So that means that in Romania, something happened. That means that the people said, you see, this is not our business. Uh, it is a freedom of, of, of persons. They can do whatever they want. We care about uh, our standards of life. We care about uh, corruption. We care about what, what to do to live uh, uh, better in this country. Uh, we don't care, uh, you see, uh, about what, what uh, the people are doing in their private life. So you see a trend, you see a movement um, and a general trend, which is towards European Union values, even though, as we discussed it here, 
a lot of people which are very disappointed can easily because of a crisis because of a war because of a, um, you know a, a hard life uh, look after some solutions which may be radicals and not so democratic like those uh, promoted by European Union. Thank uh, you so thank much. Thank you. Thanks a thank lot. You, thank because you for... I, I, I lived two years that, in that Romania. That was the short answer. That was the short answer. <laughs> thank you so much. Because I, I lived in Romania for two years and I really like your country, your people. So I, I was there when uh, Romania entered the EU. Uh, I was in the square with people and I saw how hopeful, Happy. how cheerful uh, people were, but Ooh. it's really, um, it is sad to hear uh, all those um, uh, confu uh, confusions now, but uh, I hope it, it will be better, yeah. I think the confusion is inside European Union itself, not only in Romania, fortunately. You're right. You're I think right. it's also yeah. in European, uh, Western European uh, countries, unfortunately, not only here. And the nationalist movement, sovereign uh, movement, and uh, exit movement, it is, uh, you know, uh, climbing, uh, unfortunately. Thank you. Thank you for the question and commentary. Thank you again. Thank you. And we have a question in the chat, and then we have one more, which um, I think we should do the one in the chat first. And um, I'll just read it out for you. Um, algorithmic populism, which has been discussed intensively after the 2016 US elections, refers to the digitally mediated communicative relationship between people and algorithmic actors. In this context, how should we understand the differences between traditional populism and algorithmic populism? It's a very, in fact, it's a very good question because we have a lot of discussions in European Union if, for example, we have we have to have a uh, Facebook in Europe, we have to have a social media in Europe, or we have to, uh, you know, uh, do more about to 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 um, regulate uh, Facebook or social media because the algorithms are uh, are secret. Uh, we we don't know the way the the info is spreading. Uh, and uh, I relate uh, the question uh, algorithm populism, uh, which is a very good uh, good way to put it, with what what I what I said uh, uh, before, with with the Vosogi style study, uh, where where you see uh, the disinformation and the fake news are spreading much more faster, and you know Vosogi also uh, showed us there the fact that we are now. The engineers are now constructing the algorithms uh, in such a ways that to to you know to spread uh, the information and 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 to viralize the, the the information, which they know can make us engage in a very um, uh, emotional way. So the machines now knows uh, which type of message can make us engage in an emotional way and they will spread, especially not the rational and logical, uh, easy thinking um, and deeper thinking uh, messages, but the one that, that, that would uh, make us react in a very impulsive way. Uh, so uh, what I think is that that European Union uh, can do more and uh, the European Media Act is doing that uh, can do more in uh, relation to to regulate internet and to regulate um, uh, the relation of the of the European Union representative, European Union Parliament, with uh, with uh, with uh, social media, with Facebook, and then then with uh, TikTok and then with uh, Instagram and so on and, and and so forth. Because I'm not talking about you know censorship of uh, the social media. Not not things about that. I, what I'm concerned is more about the way they are not only using the algorithms, but on the other hand, about their, their policies, uh, the, 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 the way they are blocking, deleting, or letting us express ourselves on uh, the platforms, on the digital platforms, without any kind of negotiation with the ordinary people, with, with their representatives, with, with their, their governments, with, with the, 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 the European Parliament. And for, for that reason, I believe that, that uh, uh, social media, uh, digital platforms in Europe 
should be more uh, regulated. But I repeat myself, not in the, the sense of censorship, but in the sense of, of, of uh, tell us more about uh, the algorithms and how they, they function and, and uh, uh, why should we uh, receive only the information they think we need uh, based on algorithms. What sh why should we receive only the things that, uh, for example, um, uh, are very similar with what we are thinking, like in the echo chambers or in the filter bubble? Uh, I, I think that, that this should be changed if we want a real free internet and a real free social media. And I think this is in the power of the European Union representative uh, to do. So yes, the, 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 answer, the answer is yes, uh, the algorithm uh, populism is very related with digital populism and, and digital populism uh, means also what, what our colleagues uh, mentioned, the fact that uh, machines, uh, bots, uh, artificial intelligence are using, um, you see, uh, all these lies, rumors, uh, and uh, 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 disinformation to scare us, to scare the population, because the rumors, the false and fake news are spreading much more than the real news. So it is so easy for the populace to launch or the extremists to launch a terror message or a rumor, because that would be uh, spread much more and much faster because the algorithms are, you know, conce con conceived, are, 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 are programmed for that. Uh, thank you so much. I'm gonna take one more question from Sumeye. Thank you. Thank you so much. I uh, was informed that uh, Romania has the high speed of internet. Am I right? It is one of the highest. That, that's true. In Romania, yeah, uh, we are probably that. Uh, I think also in Estonia, is in Europe, and um, especially outside Europe, there are some other countries in, uh, in Asia. But yeah, in Romania, you may find one of the, the fastest internet uh, in the world. We are usually in the top 10 uh, in, the, in the world. That's true. Yeah, it would be nice to learn more about the European Union's regulations indeed. The question is about uh, the responses to EU and if it is a part of a larger deglobalization, deglobalizing movement. Is there that kind of sentiment that you can say, or is it only because of the disappointment about uh, EU or the uh, economic aspect of it? As I, as I mentioned before, here in Romania, um, the most of the population, it is uh, not Eurosceptic, it's very Euro-optimist. I mean, uh, we used to have the, the highest numbers, like 80%, 70%, 60%. Now, more than 50%. Of course, it is declining. But more than 50%, almost 60, 55, 60% are in favor of European Union than against it. Unfortunately, you know, uh, we will have another uh, poll next year, two years, uh, three years now. And these, 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 these figures are, are lower and lower in terms of trust in European Union. Uh, if the question is, it is that uh, related with European Union only, I don't think that. I think it's also the way that Romanian politicians, which are or which are not in European, European Union Parliament, are, you know, making their job. Because they are not, if they are not doing their job properly, of course, uh, I'm talking here about the um, moderates, I'm talking here the Democratic Party, I'm talking here about the, the traditional parties. If they are a disappointment, of course, the people we, we would, would link their disappointment with these parties and we also with the European Union. But I, 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 I'm sure that, uh, as I mentioned before, uh, a lot of people, most of the people here are, are very, uh, you know, optimistic with and more optimistic with, with the way that Europe is, is, is conducted, is, is uh, uh, you know, governed uh, than Romania is. I mean, the people here has more trust, uh, have more trust in European Union institutions than in Romanian politics, you see? So for us here, European Union is like, like a savior at this moment, like, like an institution that, that to look you know, after as, as a symbol because a lot of expectations are now 
still linked to European Union. But unfortunately, year after year, these figures are, are, are going down. That, that's, that's true. So I think that, that the fact that Romania is a cor corrupted country still, the fact that institutions doesn't, doesn't work uh, the way that the people are expecting, the fact that uh, you know, uh, there, is, there is no way a lot of corruption uh, in media. Uh, some journalists are, are, are bots or corrupted by the, by the political parties. So all these type of problems make people believe that, you see, European Union didn't stop that. We hoped that European Union or Romania joining European Union would make all these disappear, you see? So that, that's their disappointment because they expected a lot of changes uh, based on the fact that we belong to European Union. They don't have something to, you know, to, to, to uh, blame or to, to um, uh, they, 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 they don't, they don't, they don't uh, actually, uh, you know, uh, uh, swear at European Union institution, but on uh, Romanian politics and politicians. Uh, usually the, the common people are doing that. Uh, okay. So uh, in my view, uh, European Union, it is still a model for the most uh, uh, Romanians. Uh, but uh, with the internet, with the crisis, with, uh, with the war, uh, with the uh, energy crisis, with, with the changes that we are seeing uh, in countries like Italy or Poland or, uh, or Hungary, or uh, even with Brexit and, and things like that, uh, the people are, are more and more you know, uncertain about the future of European Union and our, our place inside European uh, Union. But still, as I mentioned, uh, it is a way uh, long to, to, that, uh, to that point where, where more people than 50% to be against European or Euro, Euro skeptics. And Euro skepticism is, is happening around us, is happening in, in countries in the region here, as you uh, well uh, know. So uh, I think that it's up to us, it's up to, it's up to uh, Romanian civil society, Romanian media, Romanian politics, uh, and uh, what we are doing in our relation European Union to to make people believe uh, in European Union from now on, but also let, let's face it, there should be also some changes in in European Union uh, institutions and reforms there. The people are expecting that for sure. Thank you so much. We generally hear a very bleak description of countries across Europe about when it comes to populism. So it is good to know that there's still some time and hope, and it is a critical time indeed. It is, it is, it is. I can tell you that that Romanians are one of the most uh, optimistic uh, when it comes to European Union, and I, I have an explanation for that. Uh, we we still have the communists uh, in our heads and the, its ghost. You know, the ghost of communism is, is, is a, a dangerous thing. Uh, and on the other hand, we, we have Russia not very far away from us and uh, European Union and NATO are our best allies in this. Um, thank you so much. I do have a few more questions, but we are already over time a bit. So maybe I can email them to you later on. Sure, I, I can take another one if you want to, the last one. Um, Okay, I'll just go for one last question. And it's, um, so most of the time, the voters of populism are described as, you know, low class, uneducated, middle-aged people who you won't usually see used in social media platforms. So I was, um, I was thinking, so who are the audiences of digital populism? Is it the young people? Because you won't really see, you know, other sort of, older people, lower classes on these social media platforms. So what is the target audience for these? It's know? a very good question. And I'll tell you why. Because usually it's like the way you are saying, you are, you are saying or the our colleagues uh, observe, uh, usually the digital natives are using uh, digital techniques, digital tools. So uh, we may think that uh, the digital populism is addressing especially the young target. <laughs> so the youth uh, should be there. Uh, and of course, uh, many uh, supporters uh, of the um, our, for example, or for the populist parties here in Romania, may be very young. 
because they are disappointed with the economics, uh, with, uh, uh, you know, maybe they are employed, maybe uh, they are even in the school, they, are, they may be in university. Uh, many of them are very high educated, but they consider that, that um, uh, you know, uh, for them or for their family is not the best case scenario. So they can, they can do better if uh, not be so much, uh, you know, corruption or, uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, the, the traditional uh, values would be, uh, you know, proclaimed here in, in Romania. So we, we may have uh, this, this type of, of, of audience, uh, young people, not necessarily uh, poor, uh, because it has internet, it has smartphone, uh, 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 it studies abroad. But most of them are people which are not necessarily young, they are adult and even older, which are abroad Romania. And this is very important. Uh, most of the, of the supporters of, of, the, of the populist movements here are in diaspora are outside Romania, are the people that emigrated outside Romania, which are outside, outside the borders, national borders, which are uh, in European Union, studying in European Union, are very disappointed. They are disappointed in European Union. The Romanian, the very poor Romanian, Romanians that, that emigrated, that are working abroad, uh, that, that, which are doing much more better than 10 years ago, 20 years ago, which are providing and sending money for, for their kids and they are constructing and building homes here and uh, buying you know expensive cars and things like that. So they are not living very bad, but they have a disappointment on the way they are treated outside the country as foreigners, as, as migrants, as Romanians. So this is the reason why they have a discourse and ideology against you know, European unions and European values. Yes, thank you. I find that very interesting that, you know, people living abroad are actually supporting populist parties at their yeah. you know, home countries. But you know, you know, it's, 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 uh, I, I, I have to, to make an amendment here. It, it, it is not always like that, because on the other hand, you have a part of this populist. First of all, Romania has 5 million people working abroad and emigrating after 89. 5 million people. Uh, which which is very uh, huge uh, uh, big figure because we have uh, less than 17 percentage of population the whole population so uh, five percent uh, five uh, million people are outside but not all of them are supporting uh, the populists there are a lot that are supporting the the other movement I called I, I mentioned before the Union for saving Romania that if you remember these are the third party in the romanian parliament and this is a pro european movement and they 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 gained 15 16 percent most of the votes from diaspora from outside the country and that was you know a, a, a game a game changing with with, with our in uh, 2020 because that was for the first time when in the major cities where the Romanian living, for example, in Italy, in Rome, in, in Paris, in France, or in London, that was the first time where the big, the biggest cities were won, not by the pro-European, you know, uh, uh, parties like uh, Saving Romania, U USR, Saving Romania Union, but by the hour, which is with traditional family, with, uh, uh, I mentioned, uh, with uh, messages against European Union, and that happened for the first time in 2020, and that was a uh, a real surprise because usually the diaspora in Romania voted for the for the you know the people which are against socialist against communist and with pro liberal uh, economically and not only economic and ideologically uh, values progressives uh, progressists and uh, uh, people which uh, uh, brought a lot of uh, European values into Romania but that changed in 2020 for the first time when most of the votes for the nationalists and, and, and for the um, for the populists came from outside Romania. And that that I think is saying something. Yes, yes. Um, the when I studied Turkey and the AKP, most of the supporters is people that, who actually live in Europe themselves. So they don't really know you know what the country or the people are going through, but nevertheless they like that nationalistic 
yeah so the party sort of spreads yeah, so exactly. i thought that was interesting um well thank you so much i think we're going to end the session here thank you again for having me thank you um, and thanks for everyone who joined um it was lovely to have you all um and have a good evening